You're listening to Science for Soundness, the podcast. This is not your usual podcast. This is a journey, and as with any journey, I don't know yet where this one is going. If anything, I'm hoping to inspire you to take the first step, even if it's into the unknown, even if you don't know where you're going and you do it scared. Hi, I'm Steffi. I'm an equine scientist and equine therapist. I've made it my mission to support horse owners on the individual journey of horse-human connection and personal growth. I want you to know that I'm with you on this one. Think of me as a friendly voice, a reminder to stay the course, to keep going, keep listening to yourself and to your horse, even when the going gets tough. Let's do this. Hello and welcome back to Science for Soundness, the podcast. Today we're going to talk about a topic that I get asked a lot about and that is herd integration. So how to integrate or best integrate a new horse into the herd, how to create a safe and harmonious herd in and of itself. So um, before we dive into what I think about that, I want to first address the most common mistakes or at least the the easy mistakes that can happen and that people make when introducing a new horse to the herd. And I think number one is definitely that they don't know the horses that are already living in that herd. So um, if you don't understand the, the herd dynamics, if you don't understand how they all are in relationship to each other, it might be really difficult to integrate a new herd member because if you don't pay attention to these dynamics, then you can easily throw a new horse into a situation that it's not best suited for. And equally, you of course have to also understand and know the horse that is going to enter that space. So get as many, if you're um, you know, a stable or yard owner and you're trying to integrate a new herd member, try and get as many, many details, like as much information as possible from that horse owner so that you know what you're getting into your herd. And that is easier said than done, my friends, because I have been in a situation where I tried everything and met the horse beforehand and it still didn't really work for the horses. But that is something that is also going to show up in the everyday situation. So, you know, you're not going to be able to 100% determine beforehand whether it's going to be a good fit or not, but you can do your best to understand the dynamics that are currently already existing and you can understand the horse that you're going to bring into the herd and understand what type they are. For example, are they higher ranking? Do they have maybe problems with resource guarding? So, for example, food, do they tend to block the stable so that no other horse can go in or out? Are they even aggressive when, you know, something happens like the food um, resources is getting less and less? Some horses then start with resource guarding, um, but it's not an issue during every day. But as soon as it's visibly becoming less, they will possibly start. Things like that, all that detail really, really matters and is going to help you in determining whether it's a good fit or not. And then you really want to know if your herd is emotionally and also socially ready for a new member. I feel like after the last attempt of integrating a herd member failed at my place, I now only have my own horses um, together and they obviously are a really harmonious group and they've known each other for years now and they've been with each other for years and years and years and they, I think they've become really strongly bonded but emotionally speaking they're not ready to bring somebody else in. So if I was to bring a horse in and actually think about integrating them into this herd I think that would cause problems because my horses aren't there yet. So basically the horses that are allowed to come in currently are definitely separated for at least three months in order to protect the peace and everything that my herd's, herd needs right now. So, you know, horses can come in, but they have to stay separated so that it's definitely a clear boundary between them because they aren't emotionally or socially ready to welcome somebody new in. And that is something, especially when we have a high turnaround of horses coming in horses going you know they never really get to settle into a group dynamic they never really get to 
experience that calmness, that peace that really radiates from a herd that is very bonded. And in order to recover, they need that time. So when it's not about money and, and it's not about having to fill the spots again, but it's about actually the herd, then it's much, much easier to make those choices. I think if you're running a yard and you have to fill those spots, it's a lot more difficult. And obviously it, it really depends on your setup as well, whether you have a lot of space and you can keep them separately or whether um, horses have to go in small spaces straight away uh, and be together. All of that will affect your integration. But if you can read horses body language if you can read their signals their stress and pain signals even you know if you can read all of that and if you understand your herd dynamic I think you're you're going to be set up for success there however those body language cues that do tell you that your horses are finding their balance are for example being really calm and for example dozing next to each other in close proximity they will also be lying down in close proximity. Lying down at all is a really good sign because if your horse is lying down, they obviously must feel relaxed enough in order to wind down as much as that, especially if they go into REM sleep. But if they don't lie down, that would be a cue for you that tension is existing. If you see a lot of tail swishing, um, if you see a lot of face pulling, if you see that horses are constantly moving, I'm not talking about the calm, rhythmical movement that happens in, for example, a paddock paradise or paddock trail, or generally if horses have enough space. I'm talking more about this um, almost resource guarding behavior where they will walk around the hay feeder and send everybody away or horses are constantly shuffling spaces around one food source. That would be tension and you could easily tell that because the lower ranking horses will constantly be sent away, which then again, in and of itself is creating tension, especially in those horses, but also in the higher ranking horses, especially if food sources aren't spread out accordingly, then you really want to look out for calm behavior. You want to look out for gentle, soft faces. You want to look out for I want to say floppy ears, but yeah, focus on the floppy ears, not the ears that are being um, put back in order to send some threatening signals to other herd members. So you can easily tell the difference, softness, calmness versus tension and aggravation and constant movement. I think that is a really good sign that will give you cues about what's going on there. And then, of course, we want to think about how can we support both new horses and also the established herd through this change. And that's a really, really important thought, because every time you bring a horse in, it is going to affect the current dynamic. It is going to stir things up. And in order to support them through these sort of changes in the dynamics, you want to Make it a little bit easier on the horses by, for example, trying to, I'm saying trying to, because sometimes it's difficult because you have to move for whatever reason, but trying to move horses in to this new space, into a new herd in, for example, spring or summer or autumn even, but not during the months where horses aren't actively out on the pasture. And I know that a lot of horses are on pasture out in winter but I'm talking about, you know, new grass, um, like a grown grass, not not the, the really short grass that they will be on in winter. I'm talking about actual pasture that serves as food, not just as turnout. Um, and that makes a real big difference because when there is a lot of food available, the focus will not be on having to protect that. So you take, you give them a little bit of peace of mind, I would say. So trying to do that during a time where horses can be outside on a pasture where there's actual food, like fully grown out grass available, um, a variety of grasses, ideally, but that's a different story. I think that is something that we can easily get right and set our horses up for success, all of them, the, the existing herd and also the horses that are coming in. And then you really want to think about the routines of the yard. So 
bringing a new horse in can sometimes shake those things up, but you just want to keep those routines as best as you can. So for me, that means if they are um, all fed together, which they are, then, you know, I'm not going to try and just all of a sudden switch up the routine by giving different horses the buckets first like I have a set routine they know who's first they know who's second they know who's third and I'm not going to throw in the bucket for the new horse and you know at first I'm, I'm going to keep the routine to keep everybody calm and happy which also then provides the horse that is coming into this routine with a really clear foundation like they know what what's happening they can observe the other horses going through this experience and they can then join them in that experience and it's not creating any additional stress on top of it just imagine like all of a sudden feeding a different horse first how horses will react to that there are so many little things we can do if you bring a new horse in I think the best thing you can do is just be there and hang out with them without constantly making it about interaction in the sense of training but actually being with the horse being with the herd and then if you feel like your horse is ready to be taken out of this environment for some horses that's the same day for other horses that might be a week and it really really depends again on the nuance on your horse's personality because that will all affect how they will feel in this setting so um, if you can observe your horse, see what you can see and what they tell you with their behavior and then bring them out, do your, do your thing, like do the grooming if you, if you feel like or if your horse feels like, um, yes, they're, they're up for training straight away, then of course you can do that. I'm not saying don't do it. All I'm saying is please listen to your horse because they will tell you. Because what happens a lot of the time, and I've witnessed this myself, is people come in and they straight away want to do something, like the horse has to work. And whilst I understand the idea of that, and whilst I understand that, yes, it can bring some form of um, normality for them and, you know, stability in that case, it can also be a really difficult time for them. So they're just performing, but they're not really in it, like they're not really feeling that. Um, and you're just putting stress on top of that already. So just be aware, just, just, know your horse basically as always know your horse and then that will tell you how much you can do with them and how quickly and I, I get that you know we want to do things really um, with them all the time but just hanging out with them is such a valuable input and and it's such a valuable way of gaining information and data from your horse that you really want to take that into consideration and then Another thing I want to talk about is what her dynamics can teach us about connection, patience, and maybe also leadership. I mean, I'm careful with that word. I don't like throwing that around because everyone's, you know, talking about that, especially in the context with horses. But horses have this beautiful way of being in relationship to each other, being in you know, there are some roles, but they're very different and it really depends on the context. And it's just so, so fascinating to observe that. But what they teach us is that if we give things enough time for, for example, a horse to settle into a space or for a herd to find their balance, find their rhythm in this new constellation, then that is going to affect them in such a positive way like if we don't force things if we don't stress throughout that process then they're going to be so calm and so beautifully regulated I would say that you know we can then interact with them from this whole different space it's not just about let's do something together it's it's more about how do I feel when we were doing this when we're doing this together and I think that is something really really beautiful that humans could learn a lot from because we often don't give each other or ourselves even enough time to settle into new situations you know think about a new job or if you're moving into a new house I can I could tell you about myself when I moved it took me six months to feel like this is my home and now it does feel like home and it's beautiful and I love it but it took me a whole six months to be okay with that and to feel into this process and to just 
yeah, be gentle with me during that time because I, I cannot expect it to feel the same as it did feel before. And I, I think that is something that we can learn from horses very well to be in the moment and to be present and to just exist in, in whatever is happening around us at the same time, you know, without it meaning anything in particular. It's just, just is. Um, and I love that about horses. So, you know, they're, they're, I feel like they're teaching us so much about not just the connection with each other and their relationships and the complexity of the relationships, but also the beauty of the connection to oneself and how to live in the moment. Um, yeah, surrender to that moment, basically. Anyway, enough about that. That's a little insight on how to create a harmonious herd, how to create safety in your herd and how to integrate a horse. That's that's what I do. And then, like I said, it will. I will stress this so much because I feel like people always want this blueprint. Here's how you do it. Here are your five steps. That's not, I'm never going to give you that because every horse is different. Every herd is different. And yes, some people have management regimes that they really stick to and that work really well for them until they don't. And I've been there. Everything worked out until it didn't. So it always depends on the horses themselves and the situation that they're in. So do bear that in mind. If you want something like um, a blueprint, yeah, I, I think I, I cannot deliver that. But what I can tell you is take your time. Don't don't feel like, unless you have to, because you know that a horse insists on being in the herd because it stresses them out more if they're not in the herd, then then just give them time to adjust next to the herd, observe the rhythms of the herd. And when it feels like they've settled into the space next to the herd and your herd says, yes, they can come in, then is the time to um, allow them to come into the herd. But yeah, if you want more help with that, if you feel like this is something that you want to talk about or want, like I said, support with, then I'm more than happy to help out with that. You can either book a one-on-one -on -one session or I have many programs available that are focusing on horse-centered approaches to training towards their environment, towards soundness on all levels, basically. So if that's something that you're into, then you are most welcome to join us. I will put the links below and a little goodie for you as well. If you have any questions, if you feel like dropping something below, then I look forward to them and I'm happy to respond to them with a podcast episode. So do let me know, drop everything below and I'll see you soon. Hi friend. I hope you found something in this episode that resonated with you. I am beyond grateful that you hung out with me today for a little while and I do hope that you come along for the ride. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and if you feel like it, leave a review. Your feedback is greatly appreciated. If you have any questions or would like me to talk about a certain topic, check the show notes for ways to get in touch. I can't wait for next time. You got this.